This video is meant to show how to do a very basic program on the SaberJet. We'll use and we'll be following these 10 very basic steps. The first thing we need is prepared geometry and it must be saved. I'm going to open a pre-saved drawing of a kitchen with a sink. This drawing is the accurate size that I want to cut it. I've added the sink and the seams and all the individual parts are separated and joined. And we can see this if we move the parts away from each other. And it will help if we turn on show breaks. Each geometry should show one white X. The next step would be to offset any edges to leave extra material for any additional machining. You can offset the sink perimeter to the inside and offset the outside geometry to the outside. If you choose to leave extra material for additional machining, then remember to delete the finish size geometry. You should only leave the geometry that you intend to cut in your drawing. You can also add labels if you choose. The Add Labels icon can be found on the SaberJet tab. If all the commands are grayed out, go to the Machine Profile Select icon and click on the SaberJet checkbox to turn them on. Then you can choose Add Labels. Here you can see the preset buttons for seams, walls, and profiles. I'll start by labeling the seams by clicking on the seam icon and then selecting the edge to apply the label to. And then right click in the drawing when you're finished. This allows you to select another button such as wall and apply the wall labels as well. And then right click again so we can select a profile. Pre-saved profile names are in the drop-down list, otherwise you can choose the Add Profile button to type a new one in. I'll use the profile named Eased, so that is active when I choose the profile button. And now I can select the edges to apply the label Eased to. Right-click to finish, and then you can close out of the Add Labels menu. The next thing we'll do is move the parts to the left of the zero zero to allow room to draw the slab or insert the table template if we desire. This can easily be done by choosing Move, selecting all the parts, choosing to pick the parts from the right side, sliding them over to the left, clicking to set them down to the left of the zero location. Next, we can insert the SaberJet table template. This table template is needed when showing proper placement when cutting miters. Note that this table template is at 00. zero. Since these parts all have straight cuts, we can place them anywhere within the boundaries of the table so I won't need the table template for this example. But I will need to draw an accurate border of the slab that I'll be using. I'll draw a rectangle in the first corner must be at zero zero the corner of my table. Then I'll type in the X and Y dimensions of my slab which must be smaller than the physical size of my table. And now I can move my parts to fit onto the slab. There are a few ways to move parts. If I'm not worried about yield or cut time, I can use the Move Parts icon from my SaberJet toolbar. When prompted to select part, only pick the very outside perimeter. Then everything within that perimeter will be selected and moved. This method works well for eyeballing the placement, which would be fine 
as long as there is sufficient room between the parts for the blade or the water jet to cut. If you would like a better yield and shorter run time, then we'll move the parts accurately into place. I'll start by using the AlphaCam move command and select the part I want to move with the window so it includes everything inside as well. When I finish, I'm prompted to pick the base point, which I'll choose the intersection and then select the two flat lines that will intersect. Then I'll set this corner of the part down at a half inch in in the X and a half inch in in the Y. I never want to put the corner of the part exactly on the corner of the slab. We'll always need to leave a little bit of material for the blade to bite into so it doesn't deflect. Next I'll move the second largest part. This part needs to be moved and rotated. I would like this part to be aligned with the other and separated by the width of the blade. To do this, I'll use the join common line cuts from the Park Industries SaberJet toolbar. And the only thing that I'll have checked in the pop-up window is blade curve. Now I'm prompted at the bottom of the screen to select the edge of the part to be moved. So I'll want to select this edge of the part to be moved over to this edge of this part. But, it's not only select the edge, I have to select closer to this end of this edge. And when I click, I am prompted to select the edge of the part to align it to, which would be this end of this edge. And when it's clicked, the other part will align itself to it. And because the parts are a blade curve away from each other, one blade cut will separate both pieces. And the edges are aligned as well, so one pass of a blade will cut both parts. Now if we use the same method on this third part, by selecting this end of this edge to go to this end of this edge, we may not have got the results we were expecting. That's because this command aligns one end of a line to another end of a line, and the radius isn't taken into consideration. So we can encapsulate this part in an enclosing rectangle first. I'll undo this move so that we can see it a little clearer. If we would choose enclosing rectangle and select this one part and then finish, we can use the straight edge of this enclosing rectangle to align it. So this time, when we choose join parts, we'll keep the same settings of blade curve and we'll carefully select this end of the enclosing rectangle to align it to this end of this part. And now we can see that we have these two straight flat edges aligned. And we will get different, maybe better results, if we enclose the base part in a rectangle as well. I'll undo and choose enclosing rectangle and then select the other part and finish. And we'll choose join parts again with the same blade curve setting. I'll carefully select this end of this edge of the enclosing rectangle to be moved, and then this end of this edge of this enclosing rectangle to align it to. And now we have these two straight flat edges aligned so that one pass of a saw blade will cut both parts. If you choose to use the enclosing rectangles, make sure that you delete them when you're finished, so that only the things that we want to cut are left in our drawing.
If the enclosing rectangles were accidentally cut, the parts they enclosed would be cut wrong. If there were any extra parts that didn't fit on the slab, we would have to save them and make another program. But since all the parts fit on this slab, we won't need to do that for this job. So I'll just save this slab using the original name and just adding program1 to the end. This name will become the program name when we make it. We'll use Park Industries Auto Toolpath function to make the program. This can be found on the SaberJet tab. When the pop-up window opens, first verify that the correct tools are selected. If you need to change them, that can be done through the Tool Select icon. Also, verify or change the material thickness before applying toolpaths. And also, set all the selections you want to apply with the toolpath. The three basic selections that I have will probably be sufficient for most programs. There is a full description of each in your Park Industries training manual. And then with the proper settings, select the geometries to be cut as instructed on the command line. And when you're done selecting, choose Finish to apply the toolpaths. The toolpaths will be applied as blue for a blade and red for a water jet. And the arrows will show the direction of the cut. You may turn the arrows on and off with the icon on your Park Industries toolbar. The blade cuts will be made first. This will leave an opening or a slot for the water jet to start in. Whatever the blade wasn't able to cut, the water jet will finish. If we are cutting a feature, such as an oval sink that doesn't have any blade cuts, we will want to make a lead-in pierce point away from the edge to avoid chipping. This indicator is showing me that the water jet will start here and it's not in an existing saw blade slot, so it might leave me chipping on my part. So I can choose to modify the lead-in and lead-out of the water jet path. Now when I select the water jet path as prompted, it's important to take note of where I click or select. This will be the new water jet lead-in and lead-out location. Now as prompted to select a new lead-in point, I'll choose a spot away from the edge and in a counterclockwise direction. And for the lead out, it doesn't need to be very long, but I'll choose clockwise and a little away from the edge. So now the water jet will pierce a hole away from the edge, travel clockwise around the sink, and then lead out where I have chosen. You can delete the white circles if you wish. With the water jet lead-in lead-outs completed, we can now extend some of the blade cuts to the border of the slab. Choose this icon from the Park Industries toolbar. And as always, follow the prompts on the bottom of your screen. The first selection is to select the border of the slab to extend the cuts to. Then you can select the toolpath to extend to it. When selecting the toolpath, select closer to the end that you want to extend. Notice that these cut paths that we extended to the border will start cutting at the outside of the slab towards the center. Take care and pay attention to select the proper end of the toolpath so that it does not get extended across a good part. If you accidentally extend a toolpath across a part, you can always undo that with Undo in AlphaCam. 
and then choose Extend Cuts to Border again to do them properly. The only cut order used in Auto Toolpath is making blade cuts first and water jets second. You can change the order of cuts if you'd like by clicking on this icon to open the Operations panel on the left side. Here you will see all of the blade and water jet cuts in your program. If you click on one of the cuts, you will see it light up in the drawing area. You can click on the top cut and then press the down arrow key on your keyboard to see the order of the program that Auto Toolpath assigned. You can reorganize the order of the cuts if you'd like to by highlighting one and then choosing the red up or down arrow at the top of this panel. And step number 10 would be to send the G code to the machine. This is done with the Send G Code icon from your Park Industries SaberJet toolbar. Choosing this icon will send the G code to the machine if it's set up through a network, and also open up this window where we can input any information about this job if we choose to. We can choose to print out a list of the tools that were used in this job, to print out in black and white, and I might even leave a note for my operator which material to use. I might also make a note to send it to the shop for flat polishing or to the Titan for a profile. And if I click OK, it will process a job sheet and then I can choose to print it if I wish and give it to the operator so he can scan the program to load the code into the controller. Thank you for choosing Park Industries.